So uh, like I said, we've been talking about salvation. We learned how salvation is a gift of God. Salvation is the power of God. And how we have very little, if anything, to do with salvation. You know, a lot of people are unsure because they think as soon as you sin, I'm out. And we, you know, we, we have to realize, and what we've been looking at is that if salvation is a gift, you can't earn it. And a lot of us may, may at some point in our life go down a road to where we actually, it looks like we're leaving the faith. And we might actually really struggle. And maybe we don't want to leave, maybe we just start struggling heavy with a certain sin or something. Does God kick you out? Are you, are you, you know, are you no longer saved? And those are the questions you've been asking, but if grace is a gift, and you cannot earn it, um, you have to be so confident to know that God loves you despite your perfection. And we've been going over that, but today, it's, if, if you can, if you can uh, well, let me say this first. This could really, really confuse you like crazy. It's not something that's easy to understand. We started talking about it last week, and I asked Julia, hey, what did you think about the class? And she just said, uh, I don't remember anything, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so what she did is she heard a big word that she didn't quite understand, and then we started talking about it, and she just went, bing, you know, <laughs> gone. <laughs> and I, I started told her, that's how I was in math class when I was in college. She says, uh, I'm out. You know? <laughs> so... It, it, it's a hard topic, and it, the topic is predestination. It's a difficult topic, but it's one you can't just overlook. I asked Julia, so what are you going to do when you read the verses that say predestination? Yeah, I'm going to skip that. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> you know, you can't, you just can't do that. Um, so this is one that's, uh, just so you guys know, that it's one that's been debated since like the 300s, way, way back. And there's still not a whole lot of um, agreement on it. The church still fights about it. But it shouldn't be something we need to really fight and kill each other about it. it I think the way God presents it, it should be something very beautiful, something that should encourage your soul. So today we're going to look at predestination. And, and the big question is, um, your salvation is when you got saved, how confident are you? And God actually, at least what predestination teaches, is that God actually chose you before you ever walked up to that altar, before you ever surrendered, before you got baptized, before He created the world, He already chose you. And to, to, to understand that will help you in your walk to when you fail, to know that you know, God God chose you. It's not you always needing to, um, uh, I don't know how you say it, but just, you know, when you fall short, not to, not to kick yourself out so quickly. All right, so predestination. So we're going to go, this is a little outline of how it's going to go. Uh, what is it? Which is, you know, the first big, what the heck is it? Anybody know what it, anybody want, oh, how can I say that? Anybody not know what it is? Predestination. Honestly. Can even, you know? Mm. Praise the Lord. Good. Do you know? Me? I Do literally you? don't know why I'm having so many problems with so many freaking after talking to me. Um, I know that pre means before. Mm -hmm. So I would assume that that's what that means. Before. Yeah. Before. Like. I guess where you're going to end up okay. before you are given mm -hmm. the options. Right? Okay, so if you don't know, awesome. That's that's why we're doing this. So we can know. Wait, Julia? Do you know what it is, Julia? Um, yeah. That's right, we're going to teach you. Alright, so we're going to go slow. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk about what is it. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of it in the Bible. And then we're going to start talking about how does it work. And that's where it gets a little crazy. Alright, so... Predestination. Is it is it in the Bible? Let me ask you that first. Anybody? You think it is? Yeah. Do you think it's in the Bible? Probably. Probably. Alright, any all right, well we'll go over it. 
Uh, okay, note, uh, this is something you will likely not fully understand, all right? So for anyone to go into predestination and say, I'm going to fully understand this, uh, you might be uh, disappointed because it is very hard to, to completely comprehend what God plans before the world was even created. Uh, it's going to require some faith in God to know that God, look, I may not understand this, but I trust you. I got a few quotes because uh, it was um, tough. This one's from Charles Spurgeon. He was a great preacher back in the day. Dream of yoking a gnat with an archangel. Anybody know what a gnat is? A bug. It's a little bug. Fruit bug. And then an archangel. Dream of yoking a gnat with an archangel. And then imagine that you can help the Lord in the work of salvation. All right, so your salvation, the, the, the amazing reality that some of us are saved today, as wretched as we are, is amazing. It's like putting a little gnat with an archangel, you know, hooking them up together to help. It's like, what the heck are you going to do? That's how it is to where you think you have anything to do with your salvation. You know, God, God saving you. you. You're the gnat. He's the archangel. You know, that you can't do much to help. All right? So that, that's, again, that's the whole thing we're talking about, salvation. I don't know who this guy is, but it was a pretty good quote. What is most decisive in God's project is not that we fully grasp it, but that our sovereign God fully grasps us. All right, so this whole thing of salvation and use your salvation, which is amazing, you know, to think how you're saved. It's not that you totally understand it, but that you know for certain that God grasps me, that He's got me. Even though I may not understand, He does and He has me. And the last one. Uh, God will not hold us responsible to understand the mysteries of election, predestination, and the divine sovereignty. The best and safest way to deal with these truths is to raise our eyes to God in deepest reverence, say, O Lord, Thou knowest. Those things belong to the deep and mysterious profound of God's omniscience. Prying into them may make theologians, but it will never make saints. <clears throat> so, I like that one because he says, this is tough. You could dig deep into it if you're a theologian. But if you want to be a saint, if you want to be um, just effective at your call, you don't need to go deep, deep into it. Because um, it's, it's difficult. So, so today we're just going to, like I said, the last guys, we'll go as deep as you guys want. All right, We don't need to dig deep if you guys don't want to. All right, so now let's get into it. Anybody know this guy? Stephen Hawkins, what does he say? I've noticed even people who claim everything is predestined and that we could do nothing to change it, look before they cross the road. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> so, uh, you know, he, of course, he's not, he doesn't believe in predestination. And uh, it's funny because... You know, it's, he's right. Some people think every second, every little thing is predestined. And so he was like, well, why do you look when you cross? If you're going to die, you're going to die, man. So I just thought that was funny. <clears throat> All right, so there's a lot of disagreement. Morgan Freeman doesn't believe in predestination. I was looking up quotes, and he doesn't. Um, so it's not that everybody believes it. But <laughs> he's, he's the actor. Right, okay. yeah. I just, I was looking up quotes and he popped up. Oh, that's interesting. And the, the question is, is maybe some of you don't really believe in it. And even after the class, maybe you don't. But it is it in the Bible is the big question. And what does the Bible teach? Are you willing to surrender your beliefs and understanding for what God's Word says? That's the big question. So, what is predestination? Okay, Jasmine said it has something to do with pre and then a destination, which is true. This has been debated among Christians for 300s, all right? Simply, God's purposes and grace directed toward those whom He will ultimately save to the uttermost, all right? God's purpose and grace to save people. Prorio, prorizo, that's the Greek word. Pro, before, horizo, established boundaries. Uh, so to, to determine before, all right, to determine before, to set boundaries, to choose before. Predestination is often 
used interchangeably with to choose and elect, or in the Bible. And we're going to be, I'm going to be, some people don't use them interchangeably, but I'm going to be using them interchangeably um, in here. Some areas, they may not work. All right, so the word predestination, if you're wondering if it's in the Bible, it is. It's in the New Testament six times. Six times it's in there. Um, here's a quote from T.D. Jakes. Anybody know who T.D. Jakes is? He's a big black guy. Good preacher. Awesome preacher, actually. No matter where you are in life right now, know this. God puts you on this earth to fulfill the promise he has predestined for your life. Have you been predestined? Do you believe it? All right, so that's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, so I, I wanted to go over the history of it in the Old Testament. And I thought that, I actually learned when I was going through this that predestination in the Bible, let's start in the Old Testament. How does it fit in? All right, so um, what kind of things do you think God chose before and kind of implemented in the Old Testament? Any things pop up in your mind to where God, it seemed like God had it all worked out before and his plan just started, boom, going forth. Or maybe he's mentioned it. Anything in the Old Testament? I wrote some up. Don't read them. Think about it. Jerson? I think the obvious one, to me at least, is Joseph. Joseph, right. What did, what did, uh... so he was predestined to become the ruler governor of Egypt. Right. And his brothers sold him to slavers headed for Egypt. And that was according to God's plan. Right. All right. Amazing, huh? Joe, if you were Joseph, you would have had no idea. My brothers hate me, beating me, throwing me in a spot, but God had a plan all along. All right, so God's, God's planning beforehand. How was it around in the Old Testament? Yes, and let me show you. Uh, so God reigns over all he's created and sustains. After the fall, God's plan of redemption began to take place. So, as you know, in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve sinned, and God developed a plan to redeem humanity, okay? And he actually had this plan in mind, as we'll read in the New Testament, before he even started. So this, this, this history of predestination is the old, in the Old Testament is where God implements His plan of redemption, redeeming His people, saving them. And it starts with this guy, Abraham. Genesis 12, 1-3, and if somebody has it, if you could just show, read it for us. Again, we're looking at it in the Old Testament, predestination and how, how it's going to work for you guys. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. And if you have it, go ahead. Jasmine? Now the Lord said, now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in all your families of the earth shall be blessed. All right. Why did he choose Abraham? <clears throat> any thoughts? Even in the verse, did the verse give us any hints? Why him? He was obedient. Okay, he was obedient. Was he? At that moment, at that moment, didn't really say anything about obedience or any, any even relationship with God. Up until that point. Or with the verse we just read, a few verses later, it does. Why Abraham? I don't think that you could say it, that it was obedience because he hadn't given any, he hadn't commanded Abraham to do anything, so there was something to be obedient to. And I, I you're, you're, he was obedient, you're right, but that's later. Uh, up until this point, it doesn't say anything. It just says that his dad was, uh, he wasn't even a believer in God. He was some, uh, it was a, I can't remember what it was, but it's a few verses before. Um, but, that's, but the story is that God just comes up to Abraham and says, I want to make a nation out of you. 
and uh, and Abraham believes God, and he says, "Now leave, and you know I'm going to give this nation to you. I need you to follow me," and he does it. And then later we find out that his faith was accounted to him for righteousness. But until that moment, why he chose Abraham, there's no reason. And we're looking at predestination in the Old Testament. God just, this is how it all started with this guy. Everything goes back to him. Why him? Only God knows. But it doesn't give us any, anything about his obedience, his goodness, his, his, how bad he was, nothing. Not even his lineage. You know, it doesn't, doesn't really say anything. Yes, sir. Uh, I forgot where in the New Testament we're told that Terah mm -hmm. was um, idolatrous. Right. Now, I remember something about that. You're right. Okay. So Terah, which was his dad, was an idolater. Uh, he may, you know, maybe even worshipped other gods. So it's not like Abraham was like this saint like Noah. He chose him chose, elected. God said, I want you. Alright? So that's a, that's how it all started, okay? And then and then in Genesis 13, 16, God says, not only am I going to choose you, but I'm going to choose everybody who comes from your lineage, your family. And those are called the Israelites, or the Jews. He chose them. And why? Because God loved Abraham. Because God chose Abraham. He chose a whole multitude of people. And that's millions of people. They got God's favor and blessing for what reason? Because God chose Abraham. And he's keeping his promise. Alright, why did God choose the Jews? I want you to read this. Uh, Deuteronomy 7, 7 to 8. If you wouldn't mind, just read that together. This is just a little brief overview in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 7, 7 to 8. If you have it, go ahead. And... The Lord did not set His love on you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any other people, for you were the least of all the people. But because the Lord loves you, and because He would keep the oath which He swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. All right. So this is this is later, you know, after the Exodus. Um, you know, just think about why would God choose the Israelites over everybody else? All right, and obviously they weren't the only people in the world. There was lots of there was Philistines, there was tons of other people. Why them? And we're, what God says in there, He says, uh, I, I. I didn't set my heart on you because you were more numerous than any others. You were actually the smallest. Rather, it was simply because I loved you and I was keeping the, the oath that I swore to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. All right, so the Jews were God's chosen people, all right? He chose, he elected them, he chose them. Um, and it was done not on any merit or any work basis. He, he he set his heart. He chose them. All right, so that's just, in the Old Testament, God chooses people. I know, and, and I'm only saying this because when we get to the New Testament, it'll help to you know, make more sense that God chose people because he wanted to. He did it. And, and what reason did he choose the Jews or Abraham? Who the heck knows? It doesn't give us any reason. It doesn't say anything about they were the most beautiful or they were they were the most obedient they weren't he chose them um this one's a little crazy here uh, romans 9 11 through 13 I, I don't know if you know the story of jacob and esau they esau they asked a question last week about when they were born something what was the question i think Madi asked it well, what's the baby the kids, yeah. the kids. kids. Was that he was holding by who is holding whose seal jacob all right so, and it said after they were born, it said the older will serve the younger. And, I mean, I always thought, man, I, 
The reason is because he grabbed his heel, that sinner little kid. You know, I thought, man, that's a sin. I never do that. <laughs> I, I couldn't understand. I was like, why would you cast, uh, you know, a, a destiny on them before they had deserved it or undeserved it, done, done a thing? Uh, and Romans 9 gives us a little glimpse on that. Uh, I'll read it for you. You can pull it up if you want. Romans 9, 11 through 13. And we're, so we're talking about predestining, doing some predetermining things about people before even you know they even have a chance to, to, to do anything. Romans 9, 11, and it says, But before they were born, Isaac, uh, Jacob, and Esau, before they had done anything good or bad, she received a message from God. This message shows that God chooses people according to His own purposes. He calls people, but not according to their good or bad works. She was told, your older son will serve your younger son. Verse 13, in the words of the scriptures, I loved Jacob, but I rejected Esau. Alright, predestination. Mine says hate. That's hate. Right, hate. Alright, so... How does that make sense? You know, if you guys, if it makes sense to you, you're smarter than me, okay? Because it does not make any sense to me. Julia, how does it make sense to you? I'm just making sure you're awake, girl. All right, so Esau and Jacob in their mom's womb, and already God says the older one's going to serve the younger. I love Jacob, but I've hated Esau. And they didn't do a thing to deserve it, earn it, nothing. You know, why Jacob? Why love him more? Just because his brother's hairy? You know, why? There's no purpose. God chose. I don't know how else to explain it. I do not know. All right, so again, we're talking about predestination. Uh, all right, here's some examples of people chosen. In, in Just in the Old Testament example, Esther. Remember the story of Esther? Remember the famous line that's in, uh, what is it? Uh, the Veggie Tales? <laughs> well, there's a famous line that goes with her for something. Mordecai tells her this. What if you were here for something? For such a time as this. <clears throat> like, this is all happening. It's destiny. You know, like, what if this is death for you to be queen at this particular moment, in this particular time, to save the people? What if, you know, destiny? I mean, what if it was all planned out that way? All right, that's crazy. I don't want to think about it too hard. Jeremiah. I don't know if you know the story of Jeremiah. He was a prophet. This is what God says about him in, in 1.4. It's pretty awesome. In 1.4 it says, before, you know, in your mother's womb I called you. And um, I don't remember the whole thing. I was reading it, but it just it talks about it. You know, it, Jeremiah didn't have a you know he didn't have a chance to come out. And when his mom says, "Do you listen to me?" He says, "No." And a little sinner, you know, he didn't have that opportunity. He wasn't even born. He was probably a little embryo, but already God called him. And a few others: David, Samson, Moses, Joseph. God called. Moses, we already know God was looking for a deliverer and called Moses. Joseph, you know, amazing stories how God chooses people for His purpose. Yes, sir. Can I, can I read the Jeremiah one? Oh, yeah, yeah, read it. It says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you and ordained you a prophet. To the nation. Heavy words there. So even before Jeremiah, Jeremiah didn't have a choice. He was ordained to be a prophet before he was even born. Yeah. Thoughts? You guys all good with this? <laughs> good. All right. Okay, so God, in the Old Testament, we see predestination is nothing new. That God is always had a plan and he's always implementing it and he chooses people 
before they were born, but, you know, there's no, there's no basis on why he chose them. And then we get to the New Testament. And do you have any questions before we go into the New yes. Testament? Yes, ma'am. So everybody that you are mentioning, mentioning did something amazing mm. in the Old Testament. Right. What if we don't do anything as amazing? Like, right. Does that, like, I, there, I don't know. Like, yes. my... <laughs> Yeah. Do you hear where I'm going? Yep. Okay. Like, why are we so important? Kind of yeah. Thing. Why would God predestine us for just to watch Netflix all day? <laughs> Eat hot Cheetos? You know, what What the heck am I so special? Good point. Um, I've been thinking about that myself. Why, what sets us apart from them? Because Josh had a comment last week. He said, yeah, I believe in predestination. I'm trying to phrase what you said. God predestines, you know, the people who are going to do big things. Which it's in the Bible, that's the way it seems. You know, God predestines, yeah, Samson, Moses, everybody who has a, a purpose, He predestines so they can live it out. What is a major factor that differentiates the Old Testament and the New? Jesus. Grace. Well, yeah, that's true. Jesus. But I, I was thinking, I was talking about this with Jerson yesterday, and one thing that I think about is that on every one of these guys, the Holy Spirit came upon them. You know, they were anointed with the Spirit of God. No one else does it say, you know, talk about it. It only talks about the main characters who were differentiated because God's Spirit was on them. What if God poured out His Spirit on everybody? Then would we all have a purpose? I've been thinking about that. I feel like we all have a purpose, regardless. Um, like, whether or not we see our impact to something small or something big, we all have reason to be here. You know, if you think yeah. of it, like, biologically, there's, like, a lot of sperms that could have reached the egg and you right. just did. So. Right. Yeah. And, uh, I, and I'm, I, I haven't told you whether I agree or not with that. But I, 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 I like what you're saying, absolutely. You know, you should ask because you should want to know. And that's a great ex explanation, you know, that, you know, Eileen could have been a boy. Yeah. Or, you know, could have been the other one of the thousands that got in and was uh, incubated, you know. Why her? Or however you say it. You know, or Julia, you know. Why? And I've had, I was asking myself that question this week, and I thought, man, what about me? I ain't doing a whole lot. Tree trimmer. But uh, what if God actually has a plan for every one of you? Would that change the way you looked at your life? Yeah. Would, you, would it change the way you viewed everything? Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to talk about the New Testament. I don't think we're going to have time to go into it, but just for just for settling today on uh, on some truth, uh, let's read together Ephesians two eight through ten. Let's just read that together. Eight Ephesians two eight through ten, and we're gonna we're gonna settle this conversation. I uh, settle this uh, at least this small part that we talked about that Jasmine mentioned and, and Carla. Ephesians what? Ephesians 2.8. You know what, actually, let's read Ephesians 1.5, and then we'll read Ephesians 2.8, sorry. We'll just start introducing the next class. Uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, Ephesians 1, 4. 4 and 5. All right, somebody has it? Hit us. Kim, you got it? Um, it says, just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before Him in love, He predestined us to adoption. He predestined us to adop adoption. adoption. Wow. <laughs> and sons to Himself through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of His will. All right. So, who's He talking about? The special people, the Jews, the pastors, preachers, apostles. Elevation worship, probably. 
Hillsong, definitely predestined. <laughs> but not Julia. No. no. Is that really what it's saying? Let's read it again. Even before He made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in His eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into His own family by bringing us to Himself through Jesus Christ. Who's the letter addressed to? I'm writing to, in verse 1, I'm writing to God's holy people in Ephesus who are faithful followers of Christ Jesus. So this was the whole church in Ephesus. It wasn't just to the apostles, Ephesus, sorry. It wasn't just to the preachers. It wasn't just to the Jews. It was everybody who believed. And it, the word is for us today that you, you've got to realize that God does, has indeed predestined us. And with a purpose, He predestined you to be adopted into His family. That at this moment, any of you believers in here are in His family. You've been adopted into His family. And let's just jump over to Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. And uh, just to end today, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. Um, and if anybody has it, hit us. I think Eileen was reading it. Go ahead, Eileen. For by the grace you have been saved through faith, and that is not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Oh, it's a ten. <laughs> not of works, lest anyone should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared for beforehand that we should walk in them. Alright. I love this verse. I love it. Because you could be sitting here right now, like Carla asked, well, why the heck me? You know? The first question you'd be asking yourself is, why the heck are you even saved? You are terrible. You know, that's, you know, some of us say, oh, I'm saved because I grew up Christian. No, you're a sinner and you're good at it. You know, that's, <laughs> you know, that's the truth is that not one of you guys here deserve it and neither do I. And that's what this verse is saying. God saved you by his grace because he wanted to, because he loved you and you do not deserve it. Um, and that's verse 8, and then it says, Salvation is not a reward for the good things you've done, so nobody can boast. I can never say I'm better than Julia because I don't do those things or nothing. If I'm saved and she's saved, that's a miracle. Good or bad, you know, it's a miracle. I, I, I'm no better. And the last verse here, just so you know if you have destiny or not, Elmer. Verse 10, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. Alright, so that what that tells me is that God actually planned something for me to do. Before all, before He even created the world, you know, He already saw, He was already there, He, and He said, I, I need you to do something. You actually have a plan, a purpose in my plan. And I see it unfolding, you know, I see it unfolding, and for you guys growing up in the church and growing up in Christ, to know that God, God has a purpose for you. He does have a plan. And, you know, just think about Joseph's life, like Jerson mentioned. Joseph grew up, he had this nice coat with a rainbow, you know, and he, he was, uh, his brothers hated him. And he actually got thrown into a dungeon, and he was going to die there. Some miracle, they brothers sell him to these passing people going to Egypt. Then he goes to Egypt, and he's thrown in prison. He probably thinks, I'm going to die. You know, this is my life. This is everything. I've, you know, this is it. But little did he know that God had a plan the whole time for him to save his people. So I guess what, what you have to realize is that no matter the circumstance or situation, when you come to Christ... God will have His way. You know, God will do it. Um, and yes, and I do believe that every one of us has a purpose. I do believe I have one. And I do believe that that's the most important thing I could do with my life. And whatever it is. Uh, in the little things, there's purpose. In the big things, there's purpose. Everything, God has a purpose. Um, and you are no accident. You know, that, and that's biblical right there. That He created things for you to do before the world was created. So, uh, predestination, next, you know, next week we'll go a little deeper into the New Testament, 
and uh, that's where Gerson's going to come in handy, is that there's two sides to it. There's, uh, there's the Calvinist side and there's the Arminius side of how this all works. But first we want to, you know, is, is it biblical? But then how it works is that's where it gets a little complicated because that's, some, that's divine. So um, we're just getting started in it. So hopefully you can take something, but uh, let's, let's pray and roll out. we got church together. We all know that Josh and Jasmine are gifted. That's very kind of you. Gifted uh, forefronters to be in the front. Actors. Jasmine, I'm not so humble. You already know it. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, let's pray together. And we'll roll out. God.